One of the reasons I love video games so much is the way the medium is used to tell stories. It's a medium still in its infancy compared to film and especially literature. Just look at a film from 30 years ago compared to a video game from that time, but in that short amount of time, games have come such a long way already. Video games may not have the narrative depth of a novel or narrative control of a movie, but what it does have is the ability to make you feel part of the conflict and the struggle of the character. When the character achieves something, so do you as the player. This is the reason 2020's Ghost of Tsushima by Sucker Punch Studios has become one of my favourite modern video games. There are many reasons for this including the brilliant stance-based combat mechanics that drive the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, as well as the minimalist look of the game where your screen isn't filled up by oversized maps and health bars, and just lets you soak up how beautiful the world looks. Oh, and the fact that the game is basically Assassin's Creed if it was actually good for a change? Sorry, not sorry. But what I want to talk about is how the story tackles the concept of honour in a game that gives you the choice between the code of the samurai and the new code Jin creates as the ghost. Now when we talk about the samurai in this video, we'll be talking about this romanticised version displayed in the video game as opposed to the actual history of the samurai, as the two are actually quite different. In Ghost of Tsushima, the sword and the bow are the instruments of war that are deemed honourable, but the actual samurai were a lot more relaxed on this front and later down the timeline actually used guns. The game takes place in 1274 on the island of Tsushima as the Mongols arrive on Komodo Beach. You play as Jin Sakai, one of the 80 samurai on horseback that make a last stand against the Mongol invasion, knowing full well that they're outmatched and have no hope of winning. In actual fact, this did happen. 80 samurai did actually ride out to meet around 8,000 Mongols, and after the samurai defeat, the island was invaded, until a freak storm was documented to have decimated the invaders' fleet. Now there's no storm in this game, but a small detail that many miss, on the sheath of Jin's sword is a storm next to his family insignia. In this version of events, it is not the divine winds that saved Tsushima, but yourself. You are the storm. At the start of the game, the player is shown the honourable samurai way of fighting at Komoda Beach as you first engage with the Mongol invasion force. Charging headfirst into the enemy army naturally leads to your defeat after facing off against their leader Kutan Khan and being knocked off the bridge to Jin's supposed demise. After this, Jin starts to learn more from Yuna, a skilled thief who helps Jin and starts to teach him how to dispatch enemies without drawing attention to them, much to Jin's dismay. In a flashback, we see how Jin was taught this is not the samurai way, but it's a way of fighting he may have to learn if he has any hope of freeing his home from the Mongols. Throughout the game, the player is given the choice of how to approach combat. As an honourable samurai facing off against all the gadgets, tricks and overwhelming numbers of the invading forces armed with only your trusty katana, damn, that is still cool to do, or embrace the ghost and start to pick them off using stealth, trickery and swordsmanship to confuse, divide and conquer your enemies. Having the player slowly acquire all these new ways to take on the enemy is a great storytelling device, as the player is given the chance to experiment with their arsenal. It's just a great opportunity that to ignore it is wasteful. In a way, these enticing gameplay mechanics function in the story as a temptation for Jin. With each new ability unlocked as the ghost, Jin is pulled further from his honourable samurai roots. As the game progresses, it gets harder and harder to only rely on using the sword, and so you as the player have to start using some ghost weapons out of necessity to survive. It shows you the power that it brings when you change from a man of honour to a man of necessity, and slowly you become more than a boogeyman to the Mongols, but rather the one that you send to kill the fucking boogeyman. One of the nice surprises the game has is that it brings Kutan Khan 
as the big bad at the start of the game to kick your ass and begin Jin's journey. Later, Jin takes him on for round two with all the honourable techniques he's acquired along his journey. In all jewels in the game, there is no option to use your ghost weapons as this duel is seen as sacred, a fight to the death where respect is shown before Kutan Khan opts out, knowing he's losing. He poisons Jin in a last attempt effort to take him out and when this fails, ho 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 boy! The next time you fight him in round 3, he also has a bunch of his men fighting you simultaneously. But it doesn't matter. You as a player are now able to use literally every ghost weapon in your arsenal. I don't know about you guys, but I finished the bastard off by lighting him on fire. See how you like it, you little fucker. With the Khan defeated and his army shattered, you return to your uncle and surrogate father, Lord Shimaru. But that would be too simple. It turns out that because you've broken from the samurai and inspired the people with the legend of the ghost, the Shogun of Japan tasks Lord Shimaru with killing you to bring order back to Tsushima. You say your farewells to each other before the duel and write one last haiku next to Jin's ancestral resting place. Jin then has to face his final opponent. This fight matters so much because of what it symbolises. Jin is fighting his old self, his old ideology and his own family because of what he has become to save the island. After the duel comes to a close, you have two options. Spare Lord Shimaru or grant him his last wish and kill him. Now I've seen a lot of division as to which one people think is the right choice. But I always heavily lean towards sparing Lord Shimaru as the right end to the story, as Jin rightly states, I have no honour. But I will not kill my family. This ending always seemed to thematically make more sense to me, rather than honouring his uncle and killing him because in Jin separating himself from the samurai code, he finally completes his journey to become the ghost. For me, it's the way more satisfying conclusion to the story, as he's finally free to make his own choices. Ghost of Tsushima on the surface is a samurai story filled with epic jewels, incredible looking landscapes, dark stories and many moments of peaceful reflection. But once you dive deeper, it almost becomes an anti-samurai story. One that questions how far you follow honour in a world where the other side is not honourable. How honour is used against the samurai and how ultimately Jin takes it upon himself to be ostracised and ultimately hunted by the samurai for breaking their code in order to save his home. In the final moments of the game I'm reminded of a certain movie. Because he's not a hero. He's a silent guardian, a watchful protector, the ghost of Tsushima. Hey guys, thanks for watching another one of our videos. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe for more content. Big thanks to everyone who continues to support the channel. I've been James, and we'll see you in the next side adventure. Sayonara.